Today I'm going to show you how to install, configure, and live with the NoScript plugin for Firefox. Just so you know, I'm working on a Mac today, but this procedure is exactly the same if you're using a Windows computer. NoScript is a plugin for Firefox that will greatly enhance the security of your web browsing experience, but it's got a bit of a learning curve to it, so I want to step you through a few of the tough parts of getting it installed and learning how to use it and be comfortable with it today. NoScript blocks active content from loading automatically in the websites you visit. Active content are things like JavaScript, Flash, Silverlight, and other types of content that load automatically when you visit a website. Um, these types of content load without user interaction and without your permission. So that's fine if it's a friendly video that a friend sent you or you're looking at something funny on YouTube, but it's not fine if it's a malicious website that you visited by accident or maybe you were tricked into visiting by a phishing email. The other great thing about NoScript is its ability to block cross-site scripting attacks. You'll commonly see cross-site scripting abbreviated as XSS. In any case, those can be used to steal things like login and password information or other sensitive information you might have typed into your browser. So the first thing we need to do is download and install NoScript. There are a couple different ways to do that. The first way, and, and one of the easiest, is to just visit NoScript.net. But my favorite way is to go to the Mozilla.org add-ons repository for Firefox. That's at add-ons.mozilla.org. So we're going to go to that website, and we're going to do a search for NoScript. Just come up here, type in NoScript, all one word. And then we'll come down, and here it is. It's the first thing in the search results. We're going to click Add to Firefox. So it prevented this site from installing software on my computer, but I trust Mozilla.org, so I'm going to click Allow. And now it says, Install add-ons only from authors whom you trust. That's really important. They don't just put that up there for their health. There are websites other than Mozilla.org that have add-ons for you to install in Firefox, but you only want to install add-ons from websites that are trustworthy. It is possible for malicious people to sneak bad add-ons into Firefox. But I trust NoScript, I trust Mozilla.org, so I'm going to click Install Now. All right, it downloads and installs the NoScript plugin. And in order for it to work, we have to restart Firefox. So I'm going to click Restart Firefox right here. We can see that the only plugin we have installed is NoScript, and we've got a few options here. Disable and Uninstall. We don't want to do either of those two things right now. And then we've got a Preferences button. Let's click the Preferences button, and I'll take you through some of the preference panes. We might as well start at the beginning with the General tab. I recommend that you leave the settings in the General tab exactly as they are. I feel like they've struck a good balance between security and usability here. You may find that you want to come back later and adjust these settings, but starting out, let's just leave it as is. Clicking over to the Whitelist tab, a whitelist is exactly what it sounds like. This is a list of websites that the NoScript authors have decided they trust, and they're just going to build them right into the NoScript plugin because they figure you will trust them too. Now, depending on how tightly your tinfoil hat fits, it may be that you want to delete all of these and build your own whitelist from the ground up. I'm going to leave the whitelist as it is, but like I said, it's up to you. All right, the Embeddings tab. Now, when you come to the Embeddings tab, it's likely that the Forbid iframe and Forbid frame buttons will be unchecked. I recommend that you check these two. Check Forbid iframe and check Forbid frame. The reason I say that is an iframe is a really popular method for delivering malicious content. And the tricky part about iframes is they can be one pixel by one pixel. Obviously, that's way too small for you to see and too small for you to be able to do anything about. So if you block iframes, uh, you'll be protecting yourself from malicious content that might be delivered via that method. Aside from that, I recommend that you leave this exactly as is. You don't want to check apply these restrictions to whitelisted sites too because then you'll be blocking all that active content from running on websites you trust. And that's going to break all the websites that you want active content to run on. The Appearance tab is one that you can leave as is. These are just kind of fiddly things that change how NoScript looks. It doesn't really change how it behaves fundamentally too much. Uh, notifications, you may wind up wanting to turn off showing messages about blocked scripts, but starting out, we're going to leave that on. Advanced, I would leave exactly as it is until you become a more powerful NoScript user and have a better idea of what you want out of NoScript. 
So we've made the adjustments we need to make and we're going to click OK. OK, so we've got NoScript installed and configured the way we want to start out. I've pointed my browser at facebook.com slash besecure. Now you can see a few things going on here that wouldn't go on in a browser without NoScript. We've got this little icon down here with the S with the big no through it. That's the NoScript icon. And uh, a lot of action happens down there when we're adjusting our NoScript preferences. The other thing you can see is this yellow bar here along the bottom. It says scripts currently forbidden. This is just letting us know that NoScript has blocked scripted content on this page. If you've ever visited KUAthletics.com before, you know that you would expect to see a video slideshow here of you know, football games and all sorts of other athletic endeavors, but we aren't really seeing that happen. That's because NoScript is blocking that content from running. So if we want to see that content run, we'll just come down here to NoScript and we'll say allow KUAthletics.com and then we'll click in the main window and NoScript reloads the page and voila, there's a picture of football players. Now you'll notice that when I clicked that no script list there, the little icon, it popped up and there was a lot more than just KUAthletics.com there. There's com.com, fansonly.com, cstv.com, and imrworldwide.com. What that's telling you is there is active content on this website that's being served from other websites. It's up to you whether or not you allow those other websites to run active co content on this page. You might find that the page works just fine, only allowing KUAthletics.com, but you may also find that the website doesn't work as you would expect, and you have to go in here and allow other sites to run active content on this page. This is just a matter of learning by experimentation. I would say that you need to be careful about which sites you allow to run active content, but if you're not sure and you, you want to allow them all to run active content, but maybe not do it forever, you can come up here and select temporarily allow all this page. So we select that and now all of those other websites are allowed to run active content. And you can see that we've got a few more ads and a few more buttons and maybe some different things that are animated. And You know this little icon for the store. Those are running now. So clearly we were blocking active content from running by not allowing every single thing on this website to run uh, its scripts. So if we look here, oh look, it's added a couple more. Doubleclick.net. I know that's an ad network, so I'm not going to allow it to run. And NCAA.com, the official website for the NCAA. I'm going to allow that to run too, just temporarily. Okay, here's a website that a lot of you are going to need to use. KU Outlook Web Access. Now you'll notice that this website is displaying an error message, and some websites do that. They're smart enough to check to see if scripts are allowed to run, and if they're not allowed to run, they'll either display an error message or they'll kick you over to a website that tells you that you need to change your browser settings. We know that we're running no script, so all we have to do in response to this error is allow scripts to run. In this case, we're just going to click on the no script icon, and we're going to say allow ku.edu. Then we'll click in the browser window, it reloads, and look, that message went away. Now we can log into Outlook Web Access and use it exactly as we would normally. So that's it. Now you know what you need to know to install, configure, and live with NoScript on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for watching. If you have more questions or want to learn more in-depth information about NoScript, you can visit their website at noscript.net. Please visit our website at www.bsecure.ku.edu.